So let's try and find the volume of the solid of revolution by the disk method for problem number two here. Now the equation in problem number two is y equals 4x squared, excuse me, y equals x squared, ah, one more time, 4 minus x squared. So let me label that here, y equals 4 minus x squared. And our approach is going to be something called the disk method. And what we'll do here is take a little slice, much like we did with our work for area problems, and we're going to see what happens to this one slice as we rotate this around the x-axis. So what would you call that thickness? What's the thickness of my figure here? DX. DX. All right, so that's a DX thickness. And we're going to rotate this around the x-axis. Now when we do rotate that around the x-axis, this area is going to sweep out a very short cylinder. And what I want to do is I want to calculate the volume of one cylinder. And it's going to be the volume of this cylinder. Volume of one cylinder. And this is the disk method? Yeah, this is going to be the disk method. And let me help you out by reminding you of uh, the volume of one cylinder. Did I misspell cylinder? Got the Y and the I interchanged. Oh, well. Um, so the volume is going to be pi r squared times h. So let's draw ourselves a really short cylinder here, like that. Now, let's see. There. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit more legible. So the thickness then of that cylinder is really going to be what's called the height. So h is going to be dx. And then I need some expression for the radius. So what should I do for the radius? Well, okay, uh, the radius is going to be this distance right here. Now, we don't necessarily need to do it in this particular problem, but I'm trying to set things up for later problems when things get a little bit more complicated. The coordinates of some point here are x and y. Now, if I move down this to the bottom to the x-axis, the coordinates of this point are still going to be at x, except what's the y-coordinate going to be down here on, on the x-axis? Zero. Zero. So the radius is going to be the top coordinate minus the bottom coordinate, y minus zero. But if you notice, my height is in terms of x's. I've got a dx term for the height. And that's kind of telling you, giving you a little bit of a heads up that when it's all said and done, we want to have this uh, expression in terms of um, in terms of x. So it's not enough just to have uh, pi times y squared times dx. We need to replace y with something. What could I replace y with? Anyone? 4 minus x squared. Yeah, 4 minus x squared. Perfect. So the volume of one cylinder is going to be pi times 4 minus x squared squared again times dx. So that's the volume of one of these little cylinders. Okay, that looks good. Let's keep going with that. We need to figure out the volume of all such cylinders. And here, if I was being really, really formal, what I would do would be to integrate, uh, excuse me, to come up with the limit of Riemann sums, and then that limit as delta x or dx gets really, really small, turns into a Riemann integral. But let's just kind of bypass that. We're going to write down the integral right away. It's going to be the integral. I'm going to take the pi out in front. We can square this out by uh, just squaring the binomial. It's going to be 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth dx. Now the question is, what are the limits that I should put in for my limits of integration? Good. So x's, 
this slice can be taken anywhere in this region as long as it's between what and what along the x-axis, 0 and 2. So really effectively what it's doing, this is adding up the volume of all such possible slices. And what will we get? Well, we're going to have to integrate that. But right now I want to pause for a second, see if you have any questions on the setup here. And it's the setup that, that you should really focus on. Let's take a quick look at what this would be graphically. So here's the function, and let's revolve that around the x-axis. So, ooh, ah, cool, very nice. Uh, we can kind of spin it around. You see you get some kind of like a bullhorn effect here. So, yeah, it is pretty cool. Side of an egg. Yeah, side of an egg. Etc. So that's what our our region looks like, the volume we're trying to find, and the rest of it is just kind of a polynomial. So let's uh, let's just jump ahead to the answer. Uh, you can put that in your graphing calculator. What I would suggest is you put in this part in your graphing calculator, and then realize that when you get your answer, 17 and 1 15th that there's still units of pi there as well. So the final answer is 17 and 1 15th pi. You could also leave that as a improper fraction. That's okay. But if, if you do it with um, pi there, all you're going to get is a decimal answer. Your calculator is not going to be able to turn your answer into a fraction. Okay, so there's your solid of uh, revolution, or the volume of that solid of revolution. We're going to do a few more. But if you're, if you have some questions on that first one, let me know. All right. So let's move on to the second one. In this case, we've got y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared is our function. You can see that that touches the x-axis down here at x equals 3. As before, we want to find the volume of one slice, so let's do that. No, no, it should be essentially the same no matter where you put it. Okay. okay. If it changes, then there's a problem. Then you're going to have to set up maybe two integrals or take a slice in a different direction. But it's a good question. When you're doing these things, your slice by the volume or slice uh, by the disk method and the washer method has to be perpendicular to your axis of rotation. So we're rotating again around the line y equals 0, which of course is the x-axis. And like the previous one, I want to find the volume of one such disk. It's going to be really short. In fact, it looks like a hockey puck, so for grins, and as a good luck to the wings, let's uh, find the volume of one hockey puck. So as before, that volume is going to be pi r squared h. And I'm hoping that we can fill in at least one of these dimensions pretty easily. What's the height of my cylinder going to be? What would you think? DX. DX. That comes from this. When you rotate around, you're going to get that short cylinder. So the height is DX. The radius, and I'll go through this again. I'm just going to put general coordinates of X and Y here, and general coordinates of X, and then it would be 0 here. The radius is going to be the distance between these two. So R is going to be top minus bottom, y minus 0, which of course is just y. But you might also kind of notice, and it's kind of a heads up, that our thickness is dx. So I don't want y to put in here. I want some function of x. What could I put in in terms of x in problem 4? Perfect. Square root of 9 minus x squared. So it's going to be pi times the square root of 9 minus x squared 
square it again, dx. Well, that's going to work out kind of special. What happens when I square the square root there? Cancels, right? So it's going to be pi times 9 minus x squared dx. Last but not least, that's the volume of one such hockey puck. I need to add up the volume of all such pucks or all such cylinders. So integrate from 0 to 3. Again, if you take a look, I can draw this slice all the way as far left as x equals 0 and as far right as x equals 3. So those are my limits of integration. So pi times integral from 0 to 3 of 9 minus x squared dx. And this is going to end up being, I think, 18 times pi. So pi times 18, or better yet, 18 pi. And I'm taking a shortcut here. I'm just using some numerical integration to find that last part. But you guys are pretty good about integrating polynomials. So uh, I want to focus on the setup here more than I do on the integration. Are we okay with problem four? Because I'm going to change things up. Because you guys look a little complacent. No, not complacent, but like you just took a quiz or something like that, which I don't understand. Okay. Uh, there's nothing on problem number four. Let's move to problem number ten. In problem number ten, I've got it shaded for you a little bit. And the function here is y, x equals y minus y squared plus 4y. And as a little different twist on things, we're going to rotate this one around the y-axis. So around the, y, the line y, x equals 0. Now you might remember my comment in, in respect to Reem's question that with the disk method, you have to take a slice perpendicular to your axis of rotation. So what's our slice going to look like when we do that? We're going to have a dx slice like I did before. And a dy slice. All right, so that's going to change things up a little bit. So, But with the disk and eventually coming up is the washer method. When you take these slices, they always have to be perpendicular to your axis of rotation. If you take it parallel, you're setting up something much different. That's in section 7.3 that is not part of this course, part of the next course. You can do it. It's just, like I said, it's a lot different. So this is a dy slice. Okay. We can still work things the same way. <clears throat> so volume of one puck. Volume is pi r squared h. h in this case is going to be what? dy. So again, that's telling me something about my function. My integrand has to be a function of y, not a function of x. So the next thing I need to do is figure out the radius. Well, I'm being consistent about these things. And really, this is, this is foreshadowing for problems yet to come, problems like number 12C. Let me put an x and a y here. Now, if I put x and y here, and those are just general coordinates, what are the coordinates of this point right here? Zero and y. Nicely done. Zero and y. Now this distance, which is going to become our radius, r, is going to be the difference in the x-coordinates, right? Because you're moving right minus left, so it's going to be x minus 0. But again, I need to rewrite this in terms of y. So what would I put there as, as opposed to x? Perfect. Negative y squared plus 4y. 
So I think I'm good enough to plug things into my volume here. Pi times negative y squared plus 4y squared again times dy. looks good. There's one more thing I need and that is to figure out uh, the, the volume of the total figure so I'm going to do that by integrating. Question is what are my limits of integration? No. One to four. So one to four. Now if you're stuck doing this one by hand what you'd probably do is square this out and then integrate it term by term. In this case, let me just kind of fast forward to the happy ending. The answer here is 30.6 pi. So I've kind of skipped a little bit here at the end. The important thing, if I was grading this, one of the things that I want to see is that you have the proper limits of integration. The other thing I want to see is that you have the correct integrand. It's a good question because this region uh, that we're working with is bounded uh, below by the line y equals 1. So we're only dealing with the shaded region and, uh, and this curve, negative y squared plus 4y. So it's not the total region. And we could, and you know, another problem could ask to set it up from 0 to 4. Uh, but in this case, we're limited a little bit. Anything else on problem number 10 here? You know, uh, okay. Let's take a look at another one here. And it's going to be problem 12C. So in problem 12C, we've got a few functions y equals 2x squared, that's one of them, x equal 2 is another one, and this one up here y equals 8. Now, there's going to be something a little bit different about this problem. Instead of rotating around either the x or the y axis, we're going to rotate around the line y equals 8. Now that's going to make a, a substantial difference in terms of our, pollen, or our expressions here. And to see that, let's take a look at kind of a visual of this. So here's our graph. y equals 2x squared. And we've got the line y equals 8 right here. And then another line down here at zero. Let's see what happens when we revolve this around the line y equals eight. So we've got those two things here. And there's something that's a little bit different around about this one as opposed to our previous ones. And that is if you were to slice this, you were to slice it through perpendicular to the axis of rotation then what you're going to see is that there's a little gap here um, as we slice this. And you're not going to get a nice even, uh, even disc like we did before. So let's look at it from here. We're still going to take a slice perpendicular to our axis of rotation. That's going to be consistent in this section. So a slice like this. And rotating it around this axis. So, hmm, well, what's different then? Well, good question. When this gets rotated around, around this axis, um, there's a little bit of a gap here because it's this region that gets rotated. So this part of it isn't flush with this axis. So what you get when you rotate that is not a nice even 
disc, but you're going to get kind of a, a cylinder, more like a donut shape. So let's take a moment and figure out what's going to happen if we get kind of a donut shape. So so what you're going to get when you rotate this around this axis is that little gap there. We'll call this, uh, you know, uh, let's see it. Technically, it might be kind of like a torus, but uh, a washer is what the book uses. So let's find the volume of one washer. And really, the way we're going to approach that is this. We've got essentially two cylinders. You've got an outer cylinder and an inner cylinder. So that inner cylinder, I'll say, has radius, uh, we'll call it R1. And the outer cylinder, in a nod to all you Star Wars fans, has radius of R2. So, so how are we going to find the volume of this thing then? Well, we can just subtract the two volumes. Take the outer volume, subtract the inner volume. So the outer volume is pi r squared uh, 2 times the thickness. And the inner volume is pi r1 squared times the thickness. So just basically finding the volume of two cylinders and subtracting off the middle piece. To make this formula a little bit easier to deal with, let me do this. Let me factor out the pi out in front, and then in between, I'll leave the R2 squared and the R1 squared, and I'll factor out the H from the second part of this. In our problems, what do you suppose H is going to be? DX. DX. It's just going to be your thickness. So really what we need to do is come up with the two radiuses, or two radii, if I want to use my Latin correctly. So let me draw a couple things here, starting at the line y equals 8. We'll draw this one, and then another one for the line uh, all the way down to the bottom here. So this outer one here. Is that going to be my R1 or R2? R2. And this is going to be R1. To figure these things out, to figure out what we're going to use for these different radial distances, let's do this. Let's put on our figure general coordinates of x and y. Just write on that function. And now I want to move up here and down here and figure out what these points are going to be on the line y equals 8 and on the line y equals 0. What would the coordinates be of this point right up here if I move straight up from here? Good. X and 8. And then down here, if I move straight down, I'm not changing the x coordinate. I am changing the y coordinate. So the x coordinate stays the same. Y coordinate changes, that's Y equals zero. The reason I fuss with that is because it gets a little bit tricky here to come up with the correct expressions for R1 and R2. And I want to keep it uh, as straightforward as possible. So R2 and R1. R2 is going to be the difference in the Y coordinates this way. So it's going to be 8 minus 0, which is just 8. And that's great. It uh, works out pretty even. And we don't have to fuss around trying to change things into terms of x. Because remember, this slice has a dx thickness. So eventually, everything has to be in terms of x. Now, the other part that I need to figure out is the inner radius, r1. What things should I subtract to find 
that distance, that radius. 8 minus 2x squared. Good. 8 minus y, which better yet turns into 8 minus 2x squared. Nice. So that's my r1 and r2. Let's plug those into our expression over here to find the volume of one washer. So that's going to be pi times 8 squared minus 8 minus 2x squared squared again times dx. We can clean that up. That's going to be 64 minus 64 minus 32x squared plus x to the fourth dx. And there's some more cleanup that we can do after that. If you distribute the negative and collect like terms, I'm going to end up with pi times 32x squared minus x to the fourth dx. So that's Every time the, there is a gap between the axis of rotation and the function, there will be a washer. Uh, yes. Down. When there's a gap between the axis rotation and your figure, you're going to end up with a washer method. So it means you're going to have to do an R2 squared minus an R1 squared. Now, it's not always going to be nice and even like this, but for this example, I wanted you to have a reasonable one to start with. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to come up with these two expressions and set up a, a washer method when there's a gap there. The last thing to figure out is what should be our limits of integration. Now for that, look at the figure and ask yourself, well, where could I take this dx slice? In what range of values? Zero to two. Zero to two. So as far as the integration is concerned, Take the pi out front, that's a constant, 0 to 2, of 32x squared minus x to the fourth, dx. And, you know, for some of these problems, uh, chances are I'm going to uh, have you just set it up and or finish it with numerical integration. Because, I mean, they're, they're long enough that this is pretty good. The answer in this case, if you wanted to check it out, is 59 and 11 fifteenths. Don't forget the units of pi. How are we on that one? Is there anything uh, that you'd like me to clear up with that last one? Okay. We'll call it a wrap then.